Now, let's move a bit into the property space. Now, I know you had 500 plus properties, which you've divested a lot of them um, <clears throat> and moved it more into a commercial uh, field. What happened? Did you have a midlife crisis? Was it all the pesky tenants? What was the strategy there? Yeah, that's a that's a tricky one to explain because how do you boil 20 years of investing down into two sentences? So in the beginning, Dave Bradley, my business partner at the time and I wanted to get out of accounting and we sat down and we figured out we had to own about 130 properties. Mm. We didn't know how to buy them, but we, we knew how many we needed, positive cash flow. So we leveraged off the money we made in our accounting practice and the money we made by running seminars and the profits we made by investing and did this concept of what I call generations of wealth. We swap our time for money. We buy assets. Those assets throw off positive cash flow. And rather than consuming that positive cash flow, we reinvested it. And we reinvested that out of the vendor finance model we pioneered into buying blocks of units, into buying property in Tassie, buying property in New Zealand as well as Tassie. And then that's when Dave and I went our separate ways. And then I went over to the United States after the GFC and went a bit mad and bought single family, multifamily, mobile home parks, and then set up a US fund to buy commercial property, which is about $150 million of funds under management. But all of this is around this notion of multiplying. We've got making, we've got managing. How do we multiply faster to drive our returns towards achieving a survival outcome, enough money for us to live the lifestyle we want, and then a significant outcome? How do we get the money to fund the causes that we're passionate about to add meaning into our life? So I don't think I ever owned 500 properties at one point in time. The time to sell a property is when you can make more money sooner with less risk and lower aggravation. So I constantly look at my portfolio and say, is this the best return I can get with that resource? And we turn the properties over when it's time to do something different. Right, right. And now you have to release a strategic opportunities fund, which I'm very interested in. And I have mentioned I might be investing in that. So disclaimer there. So do you want to tell the audience what it is? And more importantly, what strategic opportunities are you looking for? All right. So I just need to say this is general advice only, no comments about people's personal circumstances. So we set up this US fund and it did really well. Uh, Past performance is not a guarantee of future performance, but looking at the US fund, which is a different asset with a different risk profile, we did 16% per annum for 10 years, which would have made one of the best performing managed funds in Australia consistently over that period. And and we did that on the back of property prices going up, positive cash flow and the exchange rate, the Aussie dollar falling against the US dollar. And it was God-inspired timing to get in, to buy the assets and even to get out when we did because we're winding up that fund. Yeah. And then people said, well, well, this has worked out well for us, Steve. What are you going to do next? And I said, look, you got me for 10 years. <laughs> I said I'd do it for 10 years, but I don't want a job. I bought real estate to become financially free. I don't want to trade that in for a job even if it's a well-paying job. Hmm. But what I'm happy to do is start up another fund, which will be run by a co-director of the US fund, and I'll manage the investing side of it. I'll manage the finding, the funding and the farming of the what we call the inefficient asset space, which is the commercial property space. So this strategic opportunities fund is looking to acquire efficient and inefficient assets that have a strategic opportunity in the medium to long term. And because I'm the biggest investor in that fund, obviously, I have a big vested interest in making that fund successful. And if people want to find out more about the Strategic Opportunities Fund, the best place to go is the website, which is S for Sam, O for Orange, G for George, I for Igloo, F for Fund.au, Sogoth.au. Seems to me like you might have the modest touch again going into commercial property at the moment when you know people are buying properties on uh, 2% borrowing and a 4% yield and now the rate's gone up to 7%. Those in, those um, prices seem to have come back significantly, so you might be timing it again well, Steve. Only only God will know, and I'm not that mm. smart. I just I just follow the prompting of the opportunity. But what I would say is that there's a, a disconnect in the commercial space still. That some of these projects that got green lighted when interest rates were lower, mm. and therefore commercial cap rates were also lower. Developers are wanting that low cap rate, even though the market has moved on because interest rates have gone up. Mm. So if for those people who aren't familiar with the concept, if I do a feasibility and I expect to get a 5% cap rate, that means the rent, the likely rent divided by 5% gives me my value prop. But if 
yields go up to say, we'll keep the math simple, 10% and the rent stays the same, then my property is only worth half as much. Yeah. So as yields go up, value goes down. As yields go down, value goes up. And so at the moment, we've got these people who have got property projects that have, they've got out of the ground or they've done their feasibility on lower yields, so they want higher per- sale prices, but those sale prices don't justify in the market. So you, what I say to that is you've got to kiss a lot of frogs to find a prince <laughs> in the market at the moment. But yeah, luckily, I, I, I don't mind kissing frogs. So yeah, fair enough. That's fair my enough. role in this. I'm a frog kisser. Good. I think um, Greg, Greg Goodman from Goodman Group, uh, they're a $50 billion property company, as you probably know. He said at the AGM last week, now is the time for him. They've been sitting back, lowly geared. They've got 9% gearing. He's going out there looking to buy buildings below replacement cost and get the land for free. That would be a strategic opportunity, I would have thought. Yeah, there's lots of different opportunities out there. We've got one deal down in Hobart where it's five years of rent, brand new lease, but the the real kicker here in the strategic opportunity is the council's about to rezone that land so that you can have high res up to nine stories. Wow. So you're you're buying it as it is, but when it comes time to sell, and I say this, when you don't get capital appreciation out of property and people are like, what do you mean? Of course you get capital. No, you only get capital appreciation if the person who you're going to sell it to wants to pay more for it than you did. Mm. So it's not the property, it's the person that drives the gain. So if you can sit there before you buy and say, how is someone going to pay more for this property than me? And you direct your strategy towards that, then instead of just relying on what I call generic market movements, you can actually fast track the rate at which you build capital growth. And while the stretch Opportunities Fund is mainly an income fund, of course, we've got our eyes on trying to deliver value for investors over the medium to long term. So there are good deals out there, but you need to know how to identify risk, price risk, and manage and mitigate risk as well. Fantastic, fantastic. Fantastic. 